I'm so thankful that the Lord has uh, granted us to travel in clans. And we're sojourners, we're in a strange land, <clears throat> but we're not, uh, uh, we're not just alone in it. You know, the Lord, we can travel together, exhort one another, and as iron sharpens iron, so when man's countenance sharpeneth another. And as I, as I look out uh, to you, um, and as we sit and, and speak with one another and fellowship together, I'm, I'm reminded often that I'm, I'm talking with um, and I'm looking at earthen vessels that are filled with treasure. And it can, it can be uh, difficult sometimes to like get the treasure, get the treasure out. It's, it's, uh, it's easier to see the, the earthen part, isn't it? Uh, but God giveth more grace. And I, I confess to you that I've, I've seen this, this week the treasure that's in you, and I give, I give thanks to God for you. And you've been a minister uh, to me, and so now, by the grace of God, as he enables, uh, I'll show you the, some of the treasure that he's uh, put within my earthen vessel. Romans chapter 5 is where our text is, verse 2, but I want to read verse 1 uh, as well. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That's the text. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. <clears throat> this is a pretty good assessment of of that the, the Holy Spirit has given us of, of, of where we are, of where we've, we've come. Therefore, being justified, that's an announcement, being, being justified by faith, we have peace. So much is being announced. Being, it's like the Holy Spirit saying, look around, look where you've been brought, look what you've been given, look what you have. We have peace with God. This is the same God that said, I have a controversy. Now we have peace. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also, just keeps coming. It just keeps, he just keeps opening up. By whom also we have access, again, by faith, into this grace wherein we stand and, and we rejoice in hope of the, of the glory of God. God's not dragging children to heaven. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You know, he said of ancient Israel, I, in the day, he's contrasting the two covenants, Jeremiah 31, in the day well, I took them by the hand and I led them out of the land of Egypt. Now, there's, there's one perspective of that is that God was very gentle. He took them by the hand and led them out. But there's another sense in which they wouldn't have ever left unless he took them by the hand and led them out of Israel. You know, he, he did have to make their bondage hard, right? So they wanted to go. They wanted to leave. Well... We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And in the, in the gospel, see, my want has changed. And I really don't have an affection for the world anymore. Now, I, I still wrestle against the flesh. I'm not pretending. When I will to do good, I still find the evil is present with me. But there's another law in my members. It wasn't there before. There's a new law in my members. And that, that is, that's the part that rejoices in the hope of the glory of God. The gospel appeals to men with glory. God is appealing to men with glory, with a promise of glory, with an offer of glory. He's drawing men with glory, with his glory, not just as spectators, but as partakers. And this, with his glory, he's sustaining the saints. He's sustaining and nourishing and bringing us... Um, making us stronger with the hope of glory. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. In, the, in nature, the day of judgment is like the greatest, the greatest fear to stand before God and to give an account. But we, in the gospel, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Glory is of God. Glory is in God. Glory belongs to God. Glory is, is fundamental to his presence and his work. Everything God does has, has glory in it, in the gospel. Everything has his glory in it. In fact, in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. His glory is the sum of all he is. Glory is the essence of his person or of his image, that image in which he created us. Let us make man in our own image. He, we're created in that image which has glory in it. 
there is therefore a demanding hunger in man for glory because we were made in that image. And that hunger that is for glory in man is satisfied in Christ through the gospel. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. This is the hunger that David wrote about when he said, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. There, David had an overriding desire to be with God. He said, I'll be, I'll be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Until then, he was waiting. He was unsatisfied. He was discontent. He was looking. He was hungering. He was longing for the presence of God. That's the hunger for glory that's in humanity. This is the same <clears throat> hunger that moved Moses to say, show me thy glory. All men actually are searching for satisfaction. All men are driven by desire. All men own a deep-seated affection that they've had a hard time identifying what it really is for. It's for glory. The gospel satisfies the real hunger that is in mankind. The real desire. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The gospel identifies what the real hunger is and then satisfies it. God created the hunger and then only he can satisfy it. Being made in the image of God, we're formed and knit together by God. Man without glory owns an incurable ache. And that's what creates all kinds of searching and looking and pursuing after things by men in this world. There's an ache in man. It's only satisfied by glory. There is an insatiable void in the soul that has not God. God wired up humanity in such a way that only he can make the machine run. It's like runs on glory. The preaching of the gospel targets the real want. In fact, it uncovers the real want. There's a <clears throat> the rubble and wreck of worldliness is like it's like it's c covered up. It hides what what man really wants, what really satisfies the the hunger that is in man. It's it's a hunger for living water, for the pure living it, that water that if you drink thereof that you'll not thirst again. See, that's what the gospel has to. I, the gospel identifies it in the, in thy light we see light. We see what, what men really want, that they're trying all kinds of things, after going after all kinds of things to satisfy it. What they're really looking for, and they don't know, is they're looking for glory. And only God can satisfy that hunger. People, as the prophet said, people will spend money on that which is not bread. Why? They're looking for something. They, la they labor for that which satisfies not. They're hungering for something but they're in the darkness and they can't tell what it really is. And they can't tell where to really find what it is that they're searching for. Achan was not satisfied with his golden garments and he didn't get to keep it either. Esau wasn't satisfied with that bowl of lentils. He's frustrated his whole life. Demas wasn't satisfied with loving this present world. The prodigal son was not satisfied with his riotous living and squandering his father's inheritance. It did not satisfy. Men love the praise of man, and I suggest that, they, that that love is actually made for loving the praise of God. But it's been, it's been turned in the wrong direction. It's been misidentified, misappropriated, given, to, given in the wrong, to the wrong things. See, men, it's not wrong for men to love what God has promised. Men, men, do, men love praise. Brother, Brother Jeremy just mentioned that the children... Children, they love, they're satisfied in pleasing their parents. And it's like we really, ne men really never do grow out of that. There is a love of praise, but it's got to be for the, for the praise of God. Amen. Love the praise of God. <clears throat> then shall every man have praise of God. That's not just the power of positive thinking. God is going to pray. Think about well done, good and fit. That's praise. Well done. That's going to be satisfying. It, do, it doesn't matter what it, what it was that you endured here in the world. That will fully, it will, it will fully recompense when God says, well done. That's, I rejoice in that hope. The hope of the glory of God. And also, men, men love this present world like, like Demas. But that, that's just that's a misdirection. They're made, men are made to love the kingdom. But it got, it got turned by the, by the wicked one. It got, got, 
directed in the wrong way. Men are made to love the kingdom. Men, the love of money is the root of all evil. But there's a true riches. There's true riches. And that's what, that's what men are made to, made to love, not, not this. See, actually, sin is a substitute. The devil's not a creator. God is the creator. The devil doesn't create things to tempt us with. He's got to borrow from what God said, from what God is doing, from what God has created, and corrupt it and turn it in the wrong direction. You see, this, what he, he like showed his true colors right, in the, right at the beginning with the first temptation in, in the garden. He had to start with what God put there, and he started with what God said. He always does this. God, Satan is not a creator. Sin is a, sin is a substitute. The attempt to satisfy a desire with something that God is not in. That's what sin is. The attempt to satisfy a desire. See, God created men with desires. Uh, animals, like, they have, like, instinct, you know, the, the, uh, the desire to survive and things like this. But men have the, desi- have the capacity to want something outside of themselves and to look, to desire something greater than themselves. And only God can can satisfy that desire. He satisfies it with glory. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Men have always had a trouble identifying what this want really is. The devil and the devil is always quick to offer options. That's what he gave to Eve, wasn't it? He gave her an option. There, that Eve wasn't lacking for anything. She wasn't starving. She had an abundance. But the the devil offered her an option. The devil tempted Judas with an option. There is a substitute. And that, just consider the gravity of sin. Judas traded the one who made the silver for 30 pieces of silver. See, sin is a substitute. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Humanity finds its design purpose in being a partaker of that glory that shall be revealed. Men find their designed satisfaction in that joy unspeakable and full of glory. They define their design work in that as the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. They find their design direction in that he hath called you unto his eternal glory in Christ Jesus. The fish was designed for the water. The bird was designed for the air. Man is designed for glory to seek for glory, to hope for glory, to be transformed. How? From glory to glory, to behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord and to be transformed into the same image. He's going, the Lord's going to crown you with glory. You're going to obtain glory. You're going to appear with him in glory. Even our momentary light afflictions are working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. There's a lot of glory in the gospel. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Glory is one of the many words that's been hijacked by the devil. It's been, it's been redefined. It's been changed into something that it's not. Glory can mean to some people nothing more than positive thinking about the hereafter. Just, just glory. I know, there's a, I know there's a glory. There's a, there, like the light at the end of the tunnel. That's, that's glory to some people. To some, it's, it's just uh, getting what they wanted in this world but never got. That's, that's what glory means to some people. It's been, it's been changed to be, you know, the private, uh, the, the private golf course kind of thing and the, and the, uh, the forever cookout and vacation. That, that, that's, that doesn't really appeal to the, to the heart and soul of man. That's, a, that, that's, too, that's too low. Glory to some people is actually taboo. Pie in the sky by and by. People have been discouraged from thinking about heaven, from desiring heaven, from setting their affection on things above. By oh, We can't just have all this pie. There's work to be done. Well, the work's not going to get done without people rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. People know what should be done. They're made in the image of God. People know what needs to be done. The thing is they need power to do what needs to be done. And rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God is very, very productive. Whoever came up with this, don't be so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good, this is a terrible statement. You can be so earthly minded that you're no earthly good, but it's impossible to be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Jesus was the most heavenly minded, obviously, and he did the most earthly good. 
And that's when we're the most earthly good, is when we're the most heavenly minded. When we're rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God, you find that you're very productive. You're just, you're just able to just dig in and just and run and fight and work and pray and, and endure and persevere. The hope of the glory of God. That's what does that. Amen. <clears throat> glory to some can even sound silly and trifle, like lemonade and hammocks. Whoever made the association between lemonade and hammocks and heaven? Harps and halos, cloud, you know, cl sitting on clouds, shiny, shiny streets. It says a gold, the street is of gold. Just like the devil did in the garden. He started with something God said and corrupted it. That's, he's still doing that today. He's corrupted the word glory. Don't let the devil steal glory from you. He, he's, he's a thief. He cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. People are actually hearing messages in the name of the Lord today like, God can make your dreams come true. Well, what we wanted in the beginning is what started us off in the wrong, in the wrong direction. God is not consulting with you for what you want. He's bringing us into what he wants. That's what glory is. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. That means God's giving us his wants. That's part, partaking of the, of the divine nature. That's what it's all about. In Christ, we get a new set of wants. Now, if, that, if that's what you mean by God wants, well, can make your dreams come true, then, then uh, but there's a better way to say it. See, but here's how Paul said it. I, I'm striving to lay hold on that for which Christ Jesus laid hold on me. That's, he meant humanity was dead. They didn't have any dreams. And Christ Jesus lays hold of you, and he'll, he'll give you something to lay hold of. Now, glory is not, one of, it's not something that's simple to define or, or to explain. We can mean, in, just by the word glory, we can mean heaven, all of heaven, the presence of God. He's in glory. So it's a, it's a big word. The same word can be used for boasting. Paul used this. He's like him that glories, glory in the Lord. So it's a, it's a big word. It's a deep word. It's pregnant with meaning. The glory of God is actually who he is. We shouldn't be astonished that something so, so uh, essential to the uh, fundamental to God himself is hard to define. You can't just package it up nice and neat in a little container to give it to someone. It's we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We're rejoicing in God himself. We're talking about the person and that, in essence of God, with the purpose of God, the will of God, the works of God, the presence of God. It's all involved in rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. You can't, you can't separate the glory of God from God himself. Nobody can, like, steal some glory from God and have, have some glory and not have God. It's who? It's him. It's the glory of God. Well, so here, here's some attempts. It's starting with Webster's Dictionary. That's a good... Good, good place to start. You don't want to just stay with Webster's, but it's a good place to start. Here's the first definition of glory from Webster. High renown or honor won by notable achievements. Well, that's a good start. High renown and honor. Of course, God, is, God has honor, high, high renown. Everyone speaks of his glory. But he didn't just win. He does have notable achievements, but God didn't, like, attain his glory by notable achievements. He shows his glory by notable achievements. Men see, like in battle, men can gain glory, you know, by overcoming all, all, of, their, all of their enemies. But one problem with that, that kind of glory, is that the glory can be taken from him. Nebuchadnezzar was deposed from his glory. Well, God doesn't have any threats. There are no threats to the glory of God. Not in the ultimate sense. The second definition of, of Webster is magnificence and great beauty. Well, of course, there's, that's, I, I, can, I can go along with that. I can, I can take that as a good definition, good kind of groundwork for the, the glory of God. Magnificence. You don't want to just use that word too lightly, like awesome. People use, this is terrible, how people use the word awesome. I think it was C.S. Lewis. He said, don't use the word awesome unless you have to, because then when you need to, you won't have a word to use. <clears throat> the third definition of, of, of glory is to take pride and pleasure in. That's that, now, that starts to touch our rejoicing and hope of the glory of God, taking pleasure in. Is a, you, you know, we hear people say, well, he's just in his glory when he's, when he's doing this or when he's doing that. He's just in his glory. There's, there's pleasure. Well, there's a, uh, some, some Greek Strong's uh, definition of, uh, of glory, splendor. 
and copiousness, riches, numerous. My salvation is not like taxing to the glory of God. It's fully sufficient. He's not, uh, he's not seeing the bottom of the barrel. He's, there's glory. There's glory involved. He's fully sufficient to save to the uttermost those that come to God by him. There's greatness, majesty, renown, dignity, and prestige. That's, what, that's all involved in, in glory. And I like this word, weight. There's the weight of glory. But Paul said, it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That is what God is promising men in the gospel, it can be weighed. It's, it's something that's substantial. See, everything in the earth is going to, it's like the chaff, it's just going to blow away. It's going to blow away with the wind. In fact, the whole creation is likened to a garment that's just going to be folded up. It's just going to be folded up when it's done. We're, well, we're done with that, just fold it up, and the, and the new creation then appears. Jesus is going to appear. I, I like that, how the, whole, how the Lord represented that. The, he's going to appear. It's not like he's, like, not like he's far off and he's going he's gonna to start his journey. It takes him a long time to get here. When he comes again the second time, he's going to appear. He's going to appear. And the new heavens and the new earth are going to appear. And then we will be with him in glory for we shall see him as he is when he appears. Now God said, I will not give my glory to another. So how do we hope, rejoice in the hope of the glory of God? Is that, does that mean he's just, that we're just rejoicing to see it? Well, we do rejoice in seeing it, but it's more than that. We're partakers of the divine nature. But he said, I'll not give my glory to another. So is he really giving us his glory? Or are we just, are we just like passing into the glory like, like in a cloud on the top of a mountain? You're just kind of in, in the cloud? No, we're partakers of the divine nature. But he's not giving his glory to another. So how, how are we rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God? He's, he's not going to give it to another, but in the Revelation, now I'm skipping down to the, bot, to the end of my message. In the, in, the, in the Revelation, the church, the, the heavenly Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. But God doesn't give his glory to another. How did John see that the heavenly Jerusalem had the glory of God? God when God gives glory to his church, it's not to another. He's giving it. We're created in his image. The new man is created at, in, after God in righteousness and true holiness. So when he, he's invested his glory in the gospel and through Christ and by his spirit, we're temples of the living God. So when he gives it to the church, it's not another. That's, that's, that's glorious. Well, there's another way here to define glory. This is by examples of, of how, the, how the Lord has talked about his glory in the scriptures. The scriptures are a good dictionary. It's like the Lord... He provide, when he provided the record of, of, of himself. You know, he gave us this, this rich record, the word of God. It's like there's a built-in encyclopedia. <laughs> so he, he's got, God has to define what he's dealing with dead people. So he's got to like start from the, start from the groundwork. And so he's going to define everything he's doing. And so in the creation, the whole earth is full of his glory. It's like an introductory glory. It's like, a, it's like just, the, just the hem of the garment, right? But it's the, the whole earth is full of his glory. That is, we can see some of God in what he created. It's, it's not as much, no, there's, a, there's a, a much greater picture that we can see in Christ. There's even, a, there's even more of a picture in Israel. We can see God manifests himself through, through Israel, through the prophets. But he began to manifest himself in, in creation. The whole earth is full of his glory. And now the glory of the Lord came down on Mount Sinai. That was a very disruptive uh, occurrence. The people were, had, to, they had to stay away, and there was lightning and, and thunder, and then like fire come down on the mount. It was, that was glory. Glory came. This is like our introduction to, to God come down on, on the mount. And, and later on then, when they built the tabernacle, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. It was, there was smoke, and nobody could go in. And the, and the people said, don't, don't, don't speak to us to speak to Moses and have him, because the glory was like, it was almost in, dangerous to the people. And the people, it's Solomon, when Solomon's temple was finished and Solomon prayed, the glory of the Lord came down again and filled that temple and all the people fell down. It was like a confrontation with glory. The glory of the Lord filled Solomon's temple. When, the, when Jesus was, uh, was born, the angels announced to the shepherds, the glory of the Lord shone round about them. The glory is always, always about the presence and work of God. And when Jesus comes again, he's going to come in the glory of his Father and of all the holy angels. He's coming with glory. 
He, his birth was announced in glory. And then the, the Mount of Transfiguration. See, he let a little bit of the glory come out. It's like humanity is being introduced to the glory of God. Amen. Moses asked to see glory. You know, not, I don't know. That it, did anybody else ask to see the glory of God? Not, I'm, I'm sure there, there were some, but it's like no, Moses is noted for, show me thy glory. Well, this is, this, is what, this is the heart that everybody in Christ has, to seek after, to rejoice in the, in the glory of God. And so here, I want to, I want to pause for, for, for a moment and, and consider the Lord's answer. When Moses asked, show me thy glory, he said, I'll cause all my goodness to pass before thee. Well, there's a good definition. Show me thy glory, I'll show you my goodness. Now, it's not like the Lord was ignoring Moses' request. He wasn't saying, no, 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 no. I'll show you my goodness. I'm not going to show you my glory. Now, of course, it, Moses couldn't see the, the fullness of God's glory. He was, I'll cause my goodness to pass before thee. That, that was, that's like an introduction to the glory of God. This is, this is like the, this is like the, uh, the courtyard, you know, the, out, the outer court. As, we, as, we're, as we're approaching, we, see, we start to see the goodness uh, start to see the glory by seeing the goodness. And so God wasn't ignoring Moses' request. He was saying in a very gracious way, you can't handle. No man can see me and live. That was part of God's answer to Moses in, this, in that occasion. No man can see me and live. He said, I'll have my goodness pass before thee, and I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. See, so we're, we're, he, was, he was protected by God, and in a, in a sense, he was protected from God. No man can see me and live well in the gospel see God's making a people that can see him and live and live that's re we rejoice in this hope the hope of the glory of God so it's no wonder that Paul asked the people behold therefore the goodness and severity of God that's another way of saying behold the glory behold the goodness and severity of God and in the psalm, it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Is that glory following me? Goodness and mercy follow with me all the days. Well, it, see, in a sense, the goodness is like, a, it's like glory introduced. Glory shall follow me all the days of my life. How great is thy goodness which the, thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. Is that how great is thy glory which thou hast laid up? For me, See, God is good. God is merciful. God is powerful. God isn't borrowing anything. He is. Amen. And you, when you put it all together, you have glory. His goodness, his mercy, his power. He's wise. He's righteous. He's holy. God is light. He is light. That's just, that's just an amazing thing to consider. God is light. In fact, there's not, even, there's not going to be a sun in the world to come because the Lord God and the Lamb are the light thereof. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the everlasting God. He is the immortal God. All of these things are aspects of his glory. They all make up together his glory. He dwells in the light which no man can approach unto. Now when God manifests himself in some way, he's showing his glory. He gives you goodness. He shows you his wisdom. He he works something by his power that no one else can do. He's showing his glory. That's, that's how he's introducing us. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus is the greatest revelation of God. Amen. There's no more glory in, in, in anyone else or anything else than is in Jesus. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The glory of God was manifested in, in Jesus. Everything God is doing in the gospel has his glory in it because he is in it, because Jesus is in it. And there's glory in Jesus and in what he does. Glory is like a seal or a mark or a signature to his work. The glory of God is uniquely him. It is uniquely his. He doesn't give it to another. There is no other besides him. God checked and he said, I know of no other. Here's some other examples of the, the glory of God. Joseph uh, told his brothers, tell my father of all my glory. He had power. He had riches. He had, he had influence. Well, he could, even the Pharaoh said, just go ask Joseph, do whatever he says. 
And Joseph said, tell my father of, of my glory. The queen of the south, she came to see Solomon in all of his glory. All his servants, his table, and the ascension that he had when he went up into the, to the house of the Lord. She had no spirit left in her because he saw all this, all this glory. See, God is he's introducing us to, to glory. Haman told his friends of all of his glory. Oh, I, I had a private dinner tonight with the king and with the queen. He didn't quite catch on to the nature of that dinner, but he was, he was boasting of his glory. The king has given me, he's given me power. It's about to be taken from him. But see that, Job said, God stripped me of my glory. He's talking all the things that God had, God had given him, stripped him of his, of his glory. Glory is a word of summary. It's one, it's one word that touches all, all kinds of other things, like, like body like the body of Christ. Well, there are, there's one body, but there are many members. And so when we say body, we're, we're talking about the eyes and the ears, the mouth and the, and the hands and the feet and the legs and all the, all the joints. It's, body is a word of summary. Glory is a word of summary. We're hoping in the glory of God. We're not only hoping in the patience of God. We're not only hoping in the faithfulness of God. We're not just hoping in the mercy of God. We're hoping in the glory of God. It's all of it. We hope, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Everything that's in the gospel can be tied to his glory. Amen. Goodness, power, wisdom, riches, grace. It's all, it's all invested in the gospel. The gospel majors on God. God is in the gospel. He's under the gospel. He's over the gospel. He's all through the gospel that God might be all in all. In fact, the gospel is called the ministration of righteousness and it exceeds in glory. There's glory in the gospel. Moses' face shone because he, he was so close to this glory. It like got, got on to him. And, it, and he, he covered it and, it and it faded. But the, the glory of God, it, 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 it so affected Moses that it could be, the people could see it. They could see it on him. Well, now the glory's in you. Now God, it's, it's not just reflecting, now it's in. He's investing glory in. We have come to Mount Zion. Moses went up Mount Sinai. We have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Now there's glory in people. Now you, ha you have to have, you have to know the God that put it in there to see it in somebody else. <clears throat> We've been made to sit together with Christ in, in heavenly places. There's glory. There's glory there. Glory is on display in the gospel and it's being invested in in his people. Revelation 21 11 is that, is that text I let sneak out just a little bit ago. As having the glory of God. See, John saw the heavenly Jerusalem having the glory of God like a, like a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. The church in the world to come is not going to be set on a shelf like men display trophies. The church will have the glory of God. God even now dwells in the people, and in fullness he'll dwell in us there. Glory will be in them. Glory is going to shine through us like the stars in, the, in glory. We will not simply be reflecting glory as a mirror does. Glory will be emanating because glory will be in the church. The, they will have the glory. We have the first fruits of the Spirit now. See, we, we're, being, we're being oriented we're, we're in like the school of glory now. See, as we walk by faith, we're being oriented for, for glory. And so what, what we have now, this, this down payment, this earnest of the Spirit, the first fruits of the Spirit, see, it's making, it's making these small, seemingly small vessels that we have now, it's, it's, it's stretching them out, kind of like the, the little lump of clay that's on the potter's wheel. It's being being formed it's being opened you know a lump becomes a vessel as I love seeing that as the, the potter puts his hand in that lump takes on form now it's a vessel and that vessel is to be is used by the by the master the gospel is where all that God is all that God has all that God does is focused and invested in saving men that's gospel it's one thing to hear that God has power. It's another thing that his power is toward us who believe. It's one thing to hear God is wise, but then that his wisdom is being shown toward us. His wisdom is resulting in deliverance, in salvation, in the new birth, in newness of life. In Christ, we rejoice in the same glory 
in the same glory that came down on Mount Sinai. It was a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. We're rejoicing in that same glory that they drew back from, but we're drawn to. They drew back from it. We're drawing to it. Israel said, don't speak anymore. We're saying, don't stop speaking. Israel said, let's go back to Egypt. We say, let's go up the mountain. See, the glory, it's, this is the same glory. <clears throat> Israel was told to stay away. We're admonished to draw near. Israel was actually endangered by this glory, and we actually are rejoicing in that same glory. It's not a different kind of glory. God didn't withdraw back to heaven and make modifications before he presented himself again to humanity. God hasn't changed. We've changed. Either all men are either repelled or drawn by his glory. There's no mortal that can be indifferent or unaffected by glory. We're not rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God as spectators. <clears throat> all men will spectate in the day of the Lord. We will not just be spectating, we'll be partaking. We're rejoicing in the glory that we will partake of. We rejoice in hope of partaking. We rejoice in hope of being like him when we see him as he is. Hollywood depends on spectators. The gospel makes partakers. The NFL wants spectators. God makes partakers. Babylon the Great, he, he, it only asks that you spectate and tithe. The gospel makes us partakers of his glory. So it's not just a matter of seeing the glory. In the day of the Lord, every eye will see him. The difference is those who believed on him and trusted in him and sought after him and, was, and dwelling in him, they're rejoicing in the hope of that glory of God. <clears throat> now, we're introduced to glory in the gospel, like that little stone that was cut out of the mountain that Daniel saw. Is a, is a, that was like the introduction, but as it, as it continued, it, it was the, of the increase of his government and of his peace, there shall be no end. The Lord's giving the increase of us as we're be, we've been introduced to the gospel. It's from glory to glory. We would have expired if the full measure of God's glory was given to us when we first believed. It couldn't, it couldn't be given to us, and it still can't be now be given to us in fullness. But it is, it is given to us in greater, greater, greater measure. As we were increasing, and we're take, it's like we're taking more of the land. Israel came into the border of the land, and they had to cross the Jordan first, and they took one city, and they took another city, and they, and they, they had to drive out the inhabitants. How? Little by little. We are taking the land little by by little, and we're, we're getting from God more and more glory. The, the vessels are expanding. He giveth more grace. He is, it, he is um, enlarging, enlarging our hearts so that we can handle more and more glory. Just a few concluding thoughts here. While men are discouraging us from thinking about heaven and longing for glory and run to, wanting the reward of our inheritance, I find that the Lord is drawing men with promises. He is appealing to our desire for glory. C.S. Lewis said this, Indeed, if we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering nature of rewards promised in the gospel, it would seem that the Lord finds our desires not too strong but too weak. Men's affections are turned to God through the gospel. Men's affections are turned to glory through the gospel. Jesus said, Ye receive honor one of another, and ye seek not the honor that cometh from God only. I exhort you to seek the glory that cometh from God only. That's the glory that satisfies. That's the glory that quenches. He will, Jesus, he will gird himself and make you sit down and come forth and serve you. And it is right for you to want what Jesus promised to do. He will come forth and serve you. And he will give eternal life to those who seek for glory and honor and immortality. To them that seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. Now, why, why are they seeking it? Because God made it known to them. God, just, God is displaying his glory to humanity. He's displaying it in Christ through the gospel in order to capture their affections and to draw him, to draw men to Himself. I'm going to conclude and leave you with a few phrases from uh, the hymn called Name Satisfied. There's a Clara Williams, a sister that wrote these words. Poor I was and sought for riches, something that would satisfy 
but the dust I gathered round me only mocked my soul's sad cry. Well of water, ever springing, bread of life, so rich and free, untold wealth that never faileth, my Redeemer is to me. Hallelujah, I have found him, whom my soul so long hath craved. Jesus satisfies my longings, through his blood I now am saved. <laughs> 